A very good morning. This is Study IQ. I am Prashant Mamani, and I warmly welcome all of you whose uh, brain is going through some sort of structural change on a regular basis because th this is what happens with our brain when we learn something new. And this is the beauty of competitive exam that uh, you learn something new every single day. This itself is a very enriching experience. With this, uh, dear friends, uh, Study IQ provides you pen type and tablet courses for different exams. Uh, want to know more about it? Check out studyiq.com. The first uh, editorial that we have today is pertaining to defection. Now, before going through what's been given in this editorial, let me take you through the constitution and let's see what constitution has to say about defection. It falls under the 10th schedule, right? And uh, it, uh, this was added uh, by this uh, 52nd Amendment Act of 1985. Now, uh, defection basically means uh, you are going against your party or you are doing something uh, because of which uh, your membership of the house or you can say the party. A political party uh, will be taken away uh, so there are basically three things given here right the first one is members of political parties uh, how they can be you can say their membership can be taken away let's go through it say for example you belong to a party that is called X right you belong to a political party called X and you are either say for example MP or MLA right uh, it uh, applies to both uh, this uh, group of people right mps and mlas so you belong to party x and now uh, you are doing something uh, something that is against uh, the political party right so the party can decide to uh, remove you from the that political party x and uh, if the party does that then automatically your membership if uh, from the parliament or legislative assembly uh, will end at that point of time the second is that uh, you may give up your membership right so say for example you again belong to party x and now you think that you want to contest for presidential election so you can give a resignation from uh, this party x and automatically your membership of uh, lok sabha or rajya sabha or uh, mla or as a legislative assembly or council uh, will come to an end now uh, the other thing is uh, the one of the main reason why this sort of uh, thing is given in the constitution is uh, because uh, you know that you uh, you contest an election uh, and you contest it because a party has given ticket to you isn't it and so if you are going against it or if you are giving up the membership then automatically uh, you should be removed from uh, the place uh, that you have got because of uh, backup of a political party the second thing is uh, pertaining to independent members now the name itself indicates uh, that you don't belong to any political party but uh, once you get uh, say for example elected as an MP or MLA and uh, after that if you join any political party then your membership will get terminated and the third thing is uh, pertaining to nominated members right uh, we know that uh, president nominates uh, some members in both Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. So, if you are nominated and within the six months of your nomination, if you join any, any political party, then that is fine. But after that, if you do, then you are disqualified from uh, from from the house. So, these are some basic things regarding it. Now, why we are discussing this thing? Because uh, recently, Rajya Sabha chairman has disqualified two, uh, you can say, two members uh, of Rajya Sabha right uh, we'll discuss about that uh, but let's see what we have got here now uh, the disqualification of our uh, arising out of uh, defection is to be decided by the presiding officer of the house so you have a speaker when we talk about Lok Sabha and you have chairman when we talk about Rajya Sabha and uh, earlier on uh, it was that uh, you cannot question uh, the decision taken by this presiding officer uh, in the house uh, you cannot uh, take them to the court of law but uh, after this uh, 1993's case uh, the supreme court has clarified that judicial uh, review is uh, possible right it is applicable on the decision that is taken by this presiding officer now rules and regulation regarding it 
uh, regarding this defection are made by the presiding officer the presiding officer of course has to uh, place uh, this uh, rules and regulation before the house and uh, the house can either approve it uh, can go can say yes to all the things that have been proposed by the presiding officer it can modify it or it can disapprove it entirely it uh, depends on the house and uh, of course uh, say for example if uh, you are disqualified then this is very important as well that uh, if you are disqualified then the presiding officer has to give you a chance as well to submit your explanation or uh, the presiding officer can refer your matter to a committee of privileges why we have discussed all these things of course for having a sort of in-depth understanding of this issue because i think this is a sort of thing that will keep on rolling and the ball is going to get bigger and bigger because uh, see here uh, this Rajya Sabha uh, the chairman of uh, Rajya Sabha vice president uh, M. Venka and I do now let me tell you one more thing that as soon as you become vice president you automatically become the chairman of Rajya Sabha this is called ex officio right so keep this thing in mind now uh, vice president has uh, disqualified uh, uh, Sarad Yadav and Ali Anwar and uh, the reason for this is because uh, uh, this two uh, people that you can mr yadav and anwar right they took part in a, a in a rally that was organized by rival parties uh, so uh, a complaint was filed by this jdu and uh, one more thing that i would like to add here is that uh, the action can only be taken when you formally complain right uh, vice president will not take a stand uh, until and unless you don't complain so you have to complain keep this thing in mind so this was done and uh, it was found that uh, this is something that is against the party and uh, uh, they were disqualified from the house uh, the other thing is uh, rather than referring it to committee of privileges uh, uh, Rajya Sabha chairman has said that uh, it is a time consuming thing and uh, such uh, cases should be sorted out as soon as possible and he has also said that in future if we find any sort of this sort of cases then it should be dealt within three months right uh, because uh, delaying it uh, would be tantamount to subverting the anti-defection law now the question is uh, that uh, why he has not uh, referred this thing to committee of privileges whether he is uh, whether the decision that is taken by the chairman is right or wrong because uh, a claim has also means uh, mr yadav is not happy about uh, not happy about the decision that has been taken by um, this rajya sabha chairman and uh, this is not the first time when we, we are seeing this sort of thing, uh, right? Uh, the role of uh, presiding officer becomes very important because if we go back in the past, then we find that, uh, see, in the assembly of uh, Tamil Nadu, we know after the death of uh, Jailalita, how there was a political turmoil in Uttarakhand as well. We saw the same thing last year or year before that. Uh, something similar took place in, if I'm not wrong, Arunachal Pradesh as well. I think it was Arunachal Pradesh. I can't remember the name of that uh, state, but 99% I think it is Arunachal Pradesh. So anyway, uh, this can lead to a fall in the government as well. So this is a very serious thing. And uh, um, Rajya Sabha, this uh, expelled member, has decided. Uh, Sarah Diyadu has decided that he is going to challenge the decision of uh, President, uh, Vice President, in. Uh, the court of law he cited two examples right uh, one of vijay malia and uh, ajmal kasab he said that both of them were uh, been given a chance uh, to prove themselves right uh, and uh, but he is uh, not given a chance uh, so let's see let's wait and watch as i told you that this is a thing uh, on which we will find some editorials in future as well editorials and articles now moving on to second item and this is about uh, israel and palestine and usa right uh, we uh, know that yesterday we talked about this thing that uh, usa has decided that it is going to transfer uh, or you can say usa has formally recognized uh, jerusalem as official capital of israel now this is going to create some problems isn't it and it has in fact created some problem we have two articles on this thing the one that you can see on your screen is an editorial and this one is an article that you find in today's hindu so of course uh, for a better 
understanding i have clubbed both of them together and you have some uh, articles in the international page as well so i have clubbed all these three items together of course uh, in such a way that uh, will help you have a better understanding of this thing so uh, let's see why jerusalem is important as you can see on your screen right uh, uh, it has a muslim quarter it has a christian quarter it has this uh, jewish uh, quarter and uh, you know that this Al-Aqsa Mosque, uh, a Qibli Mosque, is uh, one of the most uh, sacred destination for uh, for Muslims. Then you have a Church of uh, Holy um, Sepulchre. I'm not sure whether I'm pronouncing it right or not. Uh, but uh, basically this uh, city, Jerusalem city, is important uh, for all the three Abrahamic faiths, right, uh, religions like Islam, um, this uh, Jewish people, as well as Christians, and uh, it is it is very strange thing, uh, isn't it? If you if you observe, if you be a bit, uh, uh, you can say not philosophical, but uh, really, if we think about, it, then a couple of days ago we celebrated uh, the birthday of uh, Prophet Muhammad. The uh, Christmas is not far right and we know that uh, bethlehem is a very important place uh, for christians and uh, here we see that fight is going on uh, for one of the most uh, holiest site uh, that has been considered by uh, three branches of religion so anyways uh, our main focus here is not religion our main focus here is uh, what's going on with this thing let's uh, start with history if you go back in 1921 uh, then uh, this trans jordan the country that we know as uh, jordan right it was formally separated from palestine and uh, today we know that uh, you have uh, two portion right uh, you have uh, israel and then there is a palestine thing and uh, jordan is altogether a different country and uh, united nation in its resolution in 1947 uh, right proposed as second partition so this was the first partition uh, the separation of jordan and the second partition belongs to division of um, the rest of the land right uh, this portion here dividing it into two parts uh, one belonging to israel or, or jewish people and the other belonging to uh, this palestine or you can say palestinian arabs right this was the thing and uh, of course uh, the palestinians uh, uh, they, they were not happy about uh, this uh, division and then in 1948 uh, there was a war between Arab and uh, it is known as Arab Israeli war it took place between Israel and uh, uh, Arabic uh, countries and uh, during this point of time this Jordan occupied this West Bank area and uh, later on it was taken over by this Egypt uh, right so Egypt was controlling this uh, Gaza portion and uh, then, dear friends, in uh, Six Day War of 1967, finally it was uh, Israel became was victorious in this thing, in this war, Six Day War, and uh, it took over uh, this, it conquered this uh, West Bank, and uh, Egypt was uh, forced out of this Gaza Strip and things like that. And after that, we saw the rise of uh, two leaders, right? One of uh, Palestinian leader uh, Yasser Arafat, and the second one is uh, Menahem Begin uh, of Israel. So both of them. You can say they were nationalist, uh, right? Uh, they popularized, uh, or they they are the ones who from because in in their era we saw this uh, sort of uh, you can say a, a rise of great uh, Israel or a call for greater Palestine, and, uh, and this they both this Yasser Arafat and uh, Manyham Begin uh, at uh, during their initial period they were against uh, this uh, two-state solution so Israel was saying that uh, all everything belongs to us and Yasser Arafat was saying that everything belongs to us uh, which is uh, of course not going to end this thing and now you know that we have already I have talked uh, about this thing that uh, it belongs to this you know, all these three different uh, religions right uh, for them Jerusalem is a very important place now uh, this uh, sovereignty of uh, Israel or you can say the control or the legality of uh, Israel over Jerusalem has never been recognized by international community and uh, Jerusalem which which includes this old city right uh, you know that it is annexed in this thing and uh, even United Nation as well has not is not agreeing with 
the stand that is taken by uh, this uh, Israel. And uh, it was in 1993 when both these parties uh, came to a table and it was decided that uh, for now let's uh, stop uh, beating each other, right? And uh, we can talk about Jerusalem and it was decided that uh, this is, uh, Jerusalem is one of the, you can say, uh, it, it is at the heart of uh, the dispute that is going on between Israel and uh, Palestine. Now, uh, out of the blue, not out of the blue, but uh, we can understand it very well that uh, why U.S. President has taken this stand. Uh, we know that uh, USA and uh, Israel are ally, right? They are one of the best buddies, you can say, and uh, Israel works, uh, or you can say, uh, for uh, USA, Israel is very important to uh, Israel works as an eye and an ear of USA in this portion of the world in West Asia as well as uh, it uh, works as a hitman of USA. You can say that uh, just in case if uh, you want to keep a control on Iran then uh, US, uh, this Israel is a country uh, that can execute that job. Um, we know that Israel has got uh, nuclear weapons as well. At that point of time, if you go back in the history, then you will find that the USA was not that much, uh, you can say, against um, this Israel acquiring bombs and things like that. Anyways, so this is the thing. The other thing is, uh, if you see the societal structure or the economic structure of uh, USA, then you find that uh, uh, Jewish people are very strong. When I say very strong, I mean to say that uh, financially as well, politically. So, a Jewish lobby is a very heavy lobby in USA. And uh, it was uh, been said by uh, Donald Trump during his uh, election campaign that uh, he will sort this thing out. Uh, he will declare Jerusalem as uh, the capital of Israel. And it is not the first time that uh, this sort of thing is been said by the president of USA. In the past as well, we have seen this sort of things, but uh, no one has formally uh, done this, uh, what uh, Mr. Trump has done, uh, giving an order to shift uh, the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. So this is, uh, of course, uh, very much, you can say, celebrated by Israeli people. And uh, Arabic countries are not happy about it, but of course, uh, you know that uh, they are not going to challenge America because the America has uh, a sort of good relationship with uh, Arabic countries as well, right? Uh, it can do all the things uh, it likes. Uh, many times, you know that Saudi Arabia and other countries are not happy about USA, but then as well, they won't be able to do anything because of various factors. Now, this uh, complete and united uh, claim of, uh, you can say, Israel claim that uh, Jerusalem is completely and uh, unitedly belonging to uh, it is, uh, has been declared as well in the past, uh, null and void by United Nations Security Council resolution. And here I would like to remind all of you about uh, what we discussed yesterday, that uh, uh, the thing regarding U United Nations uh, Security Council is that uh, this P5 members, right, uh, they would be fighting with each other, they would be having so many problems, but when it comes to uh, their veto power and when it comes to them, uh, they act as a single union uh, and still no one has uh, said anything to USA on this matter and uh, this has in fact uh, started uh, uh, creating a sort of violence and disturbance in uh, in this part of the world and uh, the Hamas that is uh, Palestine has already called for third intifada now what intifada is intifada basically means uprising uh, the first one was in uh, lasted from uh, 1987 to 1993 the second one was when uh, Ariel Sharon who was the Prime Minister of Israel when he visited this Al-Aqsa Al compound at that point of time you saw this sort of uh, disturbances and now this is the third occasion and uh, this is uh, not right and India has taken a stand as well India has said that uh, uh, the problem or the issue regarding Palestine and Israel and Jerusalem uh, should be sorted out between these two countries uh, no third country can determine the future of this thing right uh, so let them deal with uh, their own problem you can say we are there to support of course India has uh, officially supported and uh, independent country of Palestine and uh, Palestine is quite happy about it. We have kept a fine relationship with both the countries. You know, the last or you can say the first visit of Prime Minister Narendra Modi 
or the first visit of Prime Minister of our country to Israel at that point of time it was uh, said that and it, which is right as well that uh, we have uh, managed to keep a fine balance uh, we are developing good relationship with Israel we have good relationship with Israel at the same time we are having good relationship with Palestine and uh, both the parties Palestinian party and this Israeli party both of them are fine with uh, this role played by India so that's everything about it uh, moving on to another item this is about uh, getting back on track it is talking about economy right uh, we have talked about economy quite a lot of times so I'm, I'm sure that it is going to be easy for you to understand this thing now uh, national income numbers the numbers that we have recently got the GDP numbers are bit good isn't it it we observed we have talked about this thing that there is a sort of reverse in the trend uh, it, uh, there was a fall down but now it has uh, started to go up a little bit which is not bad at all we know that uh, manufacturing sector uh, has uh, uh, grew by a uh, grew at uh, seven percent which is good because manufacturing when this uh, sector expands uh, it creates uh, jobs service sector as well uh, has uh, been doing good uh, which is uh, sharing a sort of lion's share uh, in our gdp so this is a good sign as well uh, regarding agriculture agriculture is a bit down because one of the reason is uh, last year's agriculture growth was quite high so because uh, last year say for example if you earned 10 rupees last year and if you are uh, on an average you are earning say for example 7 but last year you made 10 so and if this year if you are making say for example 6 rupees uh, then it will look very bad because you will naturally compare it with last year but remember last year was a bit of exemption anyways uh, so agriculture is a thing and uh, for that we there are many things that can be done right uh, providing coal storage and sampada and uh, irrigation facility insurance and other things construction is uh, not doing that good because of various reason money crunch you can say like uh, loans uh, becoming expensive many companies uh, are uh, not able to survive NPA is going up and because of NPA banks are not able to give you money and things like that then you have a fear of uh, construction coming under GST uh, the rollout of GST itself uh, then you also know that RERA is out right uh, rules and regulation pertaining to construction business and this has also created a sort of slowdown so this is the thing then uh, the most uh, discouraging sign or the bad sign is this uh, regarding the behavior of growth fixed uh, capital formation now the thing is uh, the government right uh, has invested uh, or has uh, provided money as much as it can but still we can see that private investment rate is not that up uh, ease of doing business and other things are out but still we are not able to kick that uh, or provide or this uh, entrepreneurs or these investors are not that confident yet so this is the reason why we are not getting that much private investment uh, which is uh, absolutely necessary we need private investment and for that government has to create a sort of positive vibe uh, the other thing is uh, pertaining to world economy it has uh, started looking bit better than what it used to be uh, but at the same point of time we have to ensure this uh, exports right uh, are uh, exporters and the business of export is not facing any sort of trouble that's everything regarding it now uh, see Uday Bhaskar uh, the person that you can see on your screen see Uday Bhaskar uh, he is a former Commodore and uh, I have been reading his articles and you find him in many channels as well Rajya Sabha Lok Sabha many times in DD news right uh, and other platforms uh, yeah what i personally have found that uh, the things that you learn from him is definitely out of the box right uh, it's so far i can say that i'm a big fan of c uday Bhaskar and uh, the things that i have learned from him so now uh, let's see what he has to uh, say to us uh, with the help of this article uh, see the 50th anniversary uh, of uh, India's uh, in Indian Navy's uh, submarine arm uh, falls today that is 8th December and uh, Sunil Lamba has uh, said that uh, steadily there is a sort of uh, a fall in uh, the level of boats uh, that we have but we are going to sort it out in the uh, next two decades by of course uh, significantly improving uh, uh, both quality as well as quantity 
of boats when i say boats i'm not talking about the small boats i'm talking about all different types of boats that are mentioned here you have this uh, diesel electric uh, scorpion class submarines uh, then you have this ssbns uh, they are nuclear propelled that means they run on nuclear power submarines equipped with nuclear tipped ballistic missile and the third one is uh, just a nuclear propelled ones of course uh, you can understand that uh, this ssbns are the uh, are the most lethal or the dangerous one isn't it that you find in the water and when we will have all this different uh, uh, categories of uh, submarines uh, this boats right uh, then we would be having a fine balance of uh, both attacking one and uh, you can say interceptors or whatever technical term would be but it will uh, complete that circle when it comes to uh, submarine um, defense now the thing is uh, dear friends uh, uh, the exceptional achievements uh, that uh, our country has made or the navy has made uh, uh, if we go back uh, to the history uh, if you see uh, from where we started and where we are at present then we find that india is the only and the first country not the only but the first country in the world to directly start uh, designing this ssbns uh, this is the most dangerous one rather than uh, going step by step we directly started we directly jumped from class 1 to class 10 and uh, this is of course because of uh, exceptional uh, personal working uh, with our navies uh, the thing is uh, dear friends uh, we know that uh, navy is uh, when not navy but when we talk about the submarines right uh, they are a dangerous thing isn't it it is also termed as iron coffin because uh, just in case if anything goes wrong uh, then uh, it is uh, very difficult uh, if not impossible uh, to rescue the people who are there in this submarine you know it very well that uh, first of all it is difficult to find this submarine and the second thing is that to rescue them under that water and all this pressure and things working on i'm sure many of you might have watched this movie called ghazi attack right a very beautiful movie anyways uh, so this uh, this is termed as iron coffin and uh, those men and women are brave uh, no doubt uh, who are venturing in the sea in this uh, this submarines uh, so what we need because uh, a couple of years ago we had this incident uh, nearby mumbai that uh, something went wrong with submarine and uh, the people who were working on it uh, died right uh, because we were not able to rescue them so there is a thing called uh, dsrv which is deep submergence rescue vehicle uh, which we don't have at present and uh, this is a need of the hour you can say uh, there are many countries who are keeping it and uh, of course we need it as well and so far because of uh, the the bottlenecks or you can say the inability of uh, decision making people in our country we are not able to get this thing but now we should not waste no time more time and we should get this dsrv as soon as possible that's what this article is all about uh, with this uh, dear friends uh, let's uh, jump on to the news item uh, prime minister has said that attempts were made to suppress ambedkar's ideas uh, dear friends uh, this is a very you can say you can understand it is a sort of political statement as well coming from pm but uh, i would like to add here that uh, you should take out some time and go through uh, autobiographies or uh, biographies right of uh, famous people and uh, i have gone through biography of uh, b r ambedkar it is written by uh, chairman of X, you can say former uh, chairman of uh, UPSC, and uh, that book is published by National Book Trust. It's a very crisp book, but uh, if you go through it, you will find so many things. Uh, B. R. Ambedkar is one of the most, uh, you can say, inspiring personality that has ever worked on uh, our country. Uh, with this, uh, dear friends, uh, let's see uh, another item. This is a very horrific uh, incident that is coming from Rajasthan. A 50-year-old labor was killed and he was burned alive. Uh, and this is all because of this communal issue going on. I'm, I'm so means th there is a picture as well in uh, today's Hindu. Uh, but this is very bad for a country like India. Uh, the other thing is uh, Aadhaar link uh, deadline uh, for this subsidies uh, to be March 31. Uh, 
we know that uh, still this thing is not clear whether you need other of course the uh, supreme court has said government has said that uh, for benefits you don't need other card but we know that uh, still we find many people passing away because uh, they are not having other card and if there is uh, just in case if there is any sort of technical problem as well then they are facing this sort of issue the other question is that if you see this uh, fact check uh, then you find that there are many states uh, particularly in the northeast uh, they don't have uh, that good other coverage see here assam has only 5.8 percent of other so uh, this is uh, and not uh, you can say this is going to create problems in this part of of a country so let's uh, again wait and watch and let's see how things will uh, uh, means how it will finally end uh, with this uh, ministers are not under rti i think we will find editorial or article on this thing if not tomorrow then maybe in near future uh, this has been said by delhi high court uh, it was uh, pertaining to a case where cic uh, that is uh, central information commission said that ministers fall under or uh, cic uh, termed uh, them as public authorities uh, so they fall under rti and uh, now the delhi high court has said that they don't fall under rti so again it is going to create a sort of clash and we will find out more about this thing uh, this one is uh, regarding india cutting a very sorry figure uh, bombay high court has said that the things that are going on around our country we know the communal case that we have just talked about the one that is pertaining to rajasthan and we also saw this uh, protest that is going on against padmavati anyone can protest no doubt we have talked about it but you cannot issue death threats and you cannot use violence and things like that there are proper channels through which you can place your uh, protest um, or if you are not happy about something then uh, bombay high court has also questioned uh, cbi and cid state cid like why no senior official has uh, has taken any sort of tough stand why you have not bothered to find out why this uh, narendra dabulkar and govind pansare's uh, murderers are still at large uh, so this is a thing uh, this one is very inspiring thing coming from andhra pradesh uh, police woman right uh, this four uh, brave ladies that you can see in orange t-shirt right uh, they have uh, clocked uh, 1250 kilometer on their bicycle right uh, and uh, why they took this journey to encourage women who are just in case in any sort of distress right uh, if you are facing any sort of distress then you should visit police station uh, this is the main aim so uh, we have this sort of people as well in our country right who are setting example uh, this is one of the finest you can say example of uh, police taking or you can say proactive stand taken by police so hats off to all of uh, this four brave uh, ladies of indian police uh, this uh, unesco has uh, taken uh, kumbh mela uh, under its uh, intangible cultural heritage uh, list keep this thing in mind it is by unesco and uh, yoga and navros as well earlier on they were included now we have this kumbh mela and uh, not only kumbh mela there are other things uh, around the world uh, you find uh, chogan that is a horse riding game of uh, iran then you have music and storytellings of uh, netherlands and traditional boat making of indonesia then uh, it's known as zima uh, it is a maize based uh, culinary food item uh, of a country called malawi of africa and then you have this uh, neapolitan pizza making these are the things that are included in this year's unesco's cultural list uh, nepal's uh, poll recorded 67 uh, percent turnout which is not bad a country that is struggling to have a constitution for a very long time and uh, you have this frdi bill we have talked about this thing it was as an article uh, financial resolution and deposit insurance bills uh, remember this is work in progress thing but uh, finance minister has clarified that uh, nothing that goes against the depositors uh, you will find any uh, you will not find any sort of this sort of things in this bill uh, it this is a sort of assurity given by finance minister and uh, buno Aires is a capital of argentina and over there we are going to see this world trade organizations meeting and india is going to 
stand for the farmers and the fisher fishermen of our country we know that we do provide a sort of subsidy to them and this is necessary because subsidy is provided by the western countries as well the powerful countries and uh, at present it is a need of the hour of our country this is uh, ultraviolet uh, it is a color and it is considered as the color of 2018 you have answers uh, here right uh, himalayas then you have this uh, uh, Gari Matha Marine Sanctuary that is in Odisha and the person here is uh, Benjamin Netanyahu who is uh, Prime Minister of Israel and today's question which one of the following is the tide produced as a consequence of moon and sun pulling the earth in the same direction a spring tide b neap tide c equatorial tide or d is low tide and the second question is uh, the zone separating the warm surface uh, warm surface water and cold uh, water below is known as ephilim uh, second one is thermos uh, thermocline layer third one is uh, thermohaline layer or the uh, hyplomine uh, haplomnion uh, there are very difficult words i beg your pardon uh, haplomnion layer right uh, so these are the four options and uh, you have to identify the person that you can see on your screen now uh, i have uh, received uh, uh, many uh, positive uh, you can say feedback from you guys on my facebook message and uh, thank you very much i appreciate your support and uh, let me tell you that uh, the discussion that we do here or whatever i'm presenting it belongs to you it is for uh, you guys to utilize i'm all here for i will try my level best uh, uh, thank you very much indeed for supporting me and uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, i will share the link of this lecture on my Facebook page. With this, I end this discussion. Enjoy your studies. Jai Hind.